Hey guys, I'm Kimberly from Fat Quarter Shop, and on today's Classic and Vintage, we're gonna be working on a block that I've been wanting to bring to this channel for a really long time. The reason I wanna bring it is it uses a combination of half square triangles and nine patches, and it's very easy to do. Today we're gonna to be sewing with the Threads That Bind fabric by Blackbird Designs, and when we make this, we are going to be using RFL 2312 because it blends really nice with the background. We're going to be using the Creative Grids two and a half by 18 and a half inch ruler to make our strip sets. And of course, for our half square triangles, we're gonna be using triangle papers. The Geese in the Pond is a free pattern available at Fat Quarter Shop, and today we're gonna to be making one block. We do have some low price patterns available if you want to use it in a quilt and have a quilt setting. This block uses 12 half square triangles. So each square of paper makes two half square triangles. So since we're making 12, we need six, squares of paper and on your pattern it does tell you the skew number you need and we're using h300 which gives us three inch finished half square triangles so when you're cutting your triangle paper just make sure you cut directly on that line you're going to layer your fabric a and fabric c rectangles right sides together and make sure there's no wrinkles in your fabric and then you want your paper to lie nice and flat with no bubbles. If you pin it and you have a little hump in there, you're gonna get half square triangles that are the wrong size. So I like to pin a couple of times and you want to make sure your pins are not next to your stitched lines. Once you have it pinned, you're going to take your stitch length and lower it by two stitches from what you normally stitch. So if you normally stitch at a 2.0, just stitch it like a 1.8. You're gonna stitch on the dotted lines and the closer you stitch to the dotted line, the better results you're gonna get with your paper. This is how the paper looks when you stitch directly on that line. And remember today we're using RFL 2312. So now we're going to cut on all the solid lines around your triangle paper. I prefer to cut the outside first and then cut the inside. Just like when you stitched on the line, the closer you cut on the line, the better results you're going to get. I'm gonna actually cut this in half and then singly cut each just to get a better result. And then I'm gonna cut inside here and these don't have to be as accurate because these are gonna be hidden in the seam. And then what I like to do is pull my paper back, put it on the crease, and just pull your paper off. And you're gonna do that on all 12, and then I'm gonna show you how to iron. We're gonna end up pressing these half square triangles open. The way I like to press those is to set my seam, press to one side, and let that sit for just a second. Then I cut my little dog ears off and then I'm going to press this open. And then from here, I'm gonna set a tailor's clapper on top and it's going to absorb the heat. And when we come back, all 12 are gonna be nice and flat. Now that we've made our half square triangles, we're gonna move on to our nine patches. To make our first part, you're gonna assemble a fabric E rectangle to a fabric B rectangle. You're gonna use a quarter inch seam and then you're gonna press this one towards the green and you're gonna make one of these strip sets. Now from this background strip set, we're gonna sub cut this into eight one and a half inch rectangles. So the first thing I like to do is line my ruler on the seam and cut a nice clean cut. And then we're gonna cut eight rectangles. And as you get in further to the strip, your rectangles might kind of start getting wobbly or not as straight. And if that happens, I'll show you what to do. Like from here, I'd probably stop and then recut just to make sure I've got a straight edge and keep going. You're gonna make eight background strip sets. And then this piece you don't need, so you can set this aside. Now that we've made our background strip set, we're going to move to our print strip set. 
and this time you reverse the color so your green is on the outside and your background is on the inside and on these you're going to make two strip sets from the first strip set you're going to cut four one and a half inch rectangles just like you did previously so we'll do that real quick and then this part you don't need so you can set that aside and then we're going to grab a different ruler so that we can cut this into four three and a half inch rectangles and this ruler is just not wide enough to do that so for this one, I'm going to use my six and a half by 12 and a half inch ruler by Creative Grids, and I use this ruler quite a lot. And again, to make your starting cut, just cut that, and we're going to subcut four three and a half inch squares. And when you're cutting, you can actually line up the top and the left, and you'll see that's going to give you perfect three and a half inch squares. Now we're going to turn our one and a half inch rectangles into a nine patch. Now what I forgot to tell you is on your print strip set, you want to press that towards the green. And if you look at the back, you will see that your seams are going to nest because the seams go different directions. When you put these together, what I like to do is they will nest, meaning the seams will lock. So if you move your green on the top to the left, it will actually lock and not move. So I am going to pin there, and then you wanna pin in this next one, and all you have to do is go like this, and it will lock. And then I would also pin at the beginning and the end, so that is how you're going to pin. You'll stitch with a quarter inch seam, add both top and bottom and you're going to press towards the inside and for this block you're going to make four nine patches now we're going to combine our half square triangles and our nine patches and the most important thing in this step is we're trying to make little geese wings and so you want to make sure that your half square triangles are turned the correct way you will sew these together with a quarter inch seam and press according to the pattern. And when you're reading a fat quarter shot pattern, just look at the direction the arrow faces and that's how you press. And then you'll pin these together and sew that with a quarter inch seam. And this is how your corner unit looks. And if you have used triangle paper and if you've pinned along the way, you're gonna have a nice square unit and you're gonna make four. The very last unit we're gonna make before we build our block is our center unit, and that one's super easy. You just take a fabric D square and one of your rail units, and just make sure you have it turned the correct direction, stitch with a quarter inch seam, and make four, and again, press according to the pattern. The very last step is to lay out your block and just make sure your rail units are on the inside and that you haven't misplaced the direction of your half square triangles. You're gonna pin these all together, stitch with a quarter inch seam. Once those are done, you'll add your last two seams, and ta-da, your block is done. This is called the Geese in the Pond block, and ours finishes at 15 inches, and the free block pattern is at fatquartershop.com. In addition to the free pattern, we have a low price PDF and on that, it's going to give you instructions on how to assemble the quilt in either a crib, a square lap, a rectangle lap, or a queen. And the beauty of this setting is that these flying geese create a secondary design to have more geese in the pond. I hope you've enjoyed our video today. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.